Hey YouTube. I want to take a little bit of time to explain sarcoplasmic versus myofibril hypertrophy and why you need to know the difference between each of them in order to help guide your fitness goals. This video is going to be a little bit long in length so I do apologize for that. However, in order to properly explain these, I am actually going to draw fancy little diagrams and then you can giggle and laugh at how pathetic my, uh, my drawings are. But the reason you want to know the difference between myofibril and sarcoplasmic hypertrophy is if your goals are strength or your goals are aesthetics or slash bodybuilding, you want to work towards one rather than the other. If your idea is that you want to be a jack of all trades, both strong and aesthetic, this is going to take a long time and a lot of effort. However, if you just want to be strong or just want to be aesthetic, you're going to concentrate on one. So let's start by talking about sarcoplasmic hypertrophy. So what is sarcoplasmic hypertrophy? Sarcoplasmic hypertrophy occurs when you want a, a muscle to get larger, rounder, and fuller without specifically getting stronger or building new muscle cells. All right, so let's go to the diagram and talk about that. All right, so here we have a representation of a cell. This is the fancy cell wall. So within this cell, we're going to have different things. First and foremost of which will be muscle fibers, which are going to be represented by these circles here. Now, in order to activate these muscle fibers, what's going to end up happening is you're going to need glycogen and you're going to need uh, the ability to produce energy via ATP. So within the cell itself, you're going to have quite a bit of fluid storage. All right, this is going to be the cytoplasm within the cell. All right, that everything's based off. I apologize for the shading back and forth. I'm not rich, so I don't have a great camera. Next thing that we're going to have in here is going to be organelles. And we're just going to make them these little bodies representing organelles within the cell. So now we've got organelles and we've got cytoplasm. The last missing piece is going to be glycogen. And glycogen we're going to represent with these triangles. So, with sarcoplasmic hypertrophy, what we are aiming to do is to increase the amount of organelles, glycogen storage, and cytoplasm within the cell without actually going ahead and increasing the muscle size or muscle fibers. That will become a, as a byproduct of working out repeatedly, however, that's not the main goal. As you, as you do multiple reps, what's going to happen is your body is going to adapt. And as we do a whole bunch of high rep sets, we're going to get rid of all the glycogen left in the cell. So now that cell doesn't have any more glycogen left in it. We're basically going to burn all the glycogen out. Well, the body is amazing at adapting. So what's going to happen, even after your very, very first workout lifting for the purpose of sarcoplasmic hypertrophy, your body is already going to recognize, hey, I did that workout. I ran out of glycogen before the task was done. So the next time, I need to store more glycogen. So that's what your body's going to do. Now, as you, as you lift over and over repeatedly, your body's going to store more glycogen, create more organelles, and store more cytoplasm in the cell. Initially, what's going to happen is you're going to get more glycogen in the cell, and then as time passes, more organelles will be created. So over time, what will end up actually happening is the cell will the cell is going to swell and do what we call hypertrophying. Now remember that a cell can only hypertrophy or atrophy. There's no such thing as toning. So what happens is it either shrinks or it gets bigger in size. In this case, hy uh, sarcoplasmic hypertrophy, it's going to get larger. But what's going to happen over time is it's just going to start storing more cytoplasm, create more organelles within the cell, and store more glucose. So what's going to happen is your body will adapt to say, OK, this guy or girl, sorry, is going to be lifting a whole bunch of weight with the purpose of doing a lot of reps or a lot of repeated motion. So your body's going to say, okay, I need more glucose. If 
If I need more glucose, I need more organelles to break down that glucose and create energy. You need cytoplasm, water, everything else that's in that to facilitate uh, the creation of ATP energy. This is sarcoplasmic hypertrophy. This is what it looks like. Cells swell and get more cytoplasm, um, organelles, and glucose, but you'll notice that the muscle fibers aren't necessarily increasing in numbers. Not just yet. Over time, your body will eventually adapt and create more muscle cells, okay? But it's going to be at a much slower pace than say a bodybuilder's uh, powerlifting counterpart. So that's what's gonna happen over time. That is your adaptation with sarcoplasmic hypertrophy. Now let's go ahead and talk about myofibril hypertrophy, which has to do more with uh, building dense lean muscle as opposed to increasing size based on uh, water and glycogen storage. All right, guys and girls, now let's tackle myofibril hypertrophy. We just talked about sarcoplasmic hypertrophy where the purpose is to increase the size of the cell by getting more cytoplasm, glucose, and uh, organelles. However, with myofibril hypertrophy, what we're actually trying to do is create more dense muscle fibers. So what'll happen is you got your cell wall here. I know I'm so fancy at drawing, aren't I? You got your muscle cells in the middle. You got your cytoplasm kicking around there. We've got our organelles. And lastly, we've got our glucose storage. I don't even think these are the same colors. I forgot what colors I was using. And it was like 30 seconds ago. So that's what's gonna, so this is the cell to start with. Now when we work at a lower rep range, um, for the purpose of say powerlifting, what's gonna end up happening is we're gonna concentrate not on creating more um, swelling, but more lean dense muscle fibers. Now when you lift higher rep ranges, you're gonna need more glucose and organelles to facilitate the amount of energy that's required. However, for one-off heavy lifts or rep ranges of one to three, you don't need as much energy production because you're only going for a one-off uh, event. So what will end up happening is when you train in that rep range, what your body will do is actually create more muscle fibers over time. Now, much like with sarcoplasmic hypertrophy, there is going to be some spillover over time where as you're building these new muscle fibers, you're going to slowly gather a little bit more glycogen because your body's going to have to adapt and accommodate the amount of muscles that are firing. And the more muscles you have, or muscle, muscle cells you have firing, the more energy that's going to be required. However, unlike sarcoplasmic hypertrophy with myofibril, it's a, a lot of slower of a process. You don't need as much glycogen as if you're doing um, high rep ranges. You'll notice though with the myofibril, as you create more dense muscle cells, you might get a little bit more organelles, might a little bit more cytoplasm and, and glucose, but the cell itself doesn't really get bigger in size. It's gonna take a lot of work, a lot of, of lifting, and a lot of dense muscle cell creation before that cell, uh, before that cell size is actually gonna increase. Until it's necessary, your cell size will stay the same. So that's the difference between sarcoplasmic and myofibril hypertrophy. One will increase uh, the size of the muscle a lot quicker than the other one. However, you will not be able to list, lift as much weight. You'll be able to lift lower weights a lot because of the amount of glycogen you have stored to create energy to allow that muscle to fire a whole bunch. But you won't be able to lift really heavy weights because you just lack the muscle cells, the center guys, to fire and these all firing at the same time is what creates strength. Whereas with myofibril, you've got a ton of muscle cells firing, but you're only gonna be able to lift like once or twice. So that's the difference between myofibril and sarcoplasmic hypertrophy. Really quite simple. If you're interested in aesthetics and bodybuilding, your concentration is gonna be on sarcoplasmic hypertrophy. If on the other hand, your interest is strength, you're gonna be concentrating on myofibril hypertrophy. It's pretty much that simple. You can be a jack of all trades. However, the process of getting new glycogen, cytoplasm, and organelles, as well as creating new muscle fibers, is gonna be a lot slower process than if you concentrate on one or the other. Now, this is a really simplistic, broken down way of explaining it. 
Obviously, it's a lot more complex than that, but I'm trying to just give you an idea of the difference between the two. That's it, guys. Uh, if you have any questions, please post them down below or send me an email. I'd love to answer them. And if not, then as always, eat like a bodybuilder and train like a powerlifter.